Okay, we're back, and we're going to continue talking about uh, significant figures, and this time we're going to do some calculating, and we're going to do some rounding off to the proper number of significant figures today. First, how did you guys do on this example that I had set up for you at the end of our last discussion? I asked you to try these on your own, and and then we compare your work to, to what I did. Let's see how you did following our significant figure rules. Uh, how many sig figs? are in the following measurements. So letter A, 29.43 centimeters. Well, it turns out that all non-zero digits in a measurement are considered to be significant. So this one's pretty easy. We would say four significant figures, because there are no zeros in there. If you remember, as we went over our rules, the only ones we really questioned, the only digits we really questioned, were those that had zeros in them. How about letter B, 507.2? Let's see, that's a zero between non-zero digits. So that zero is significant. So we'd say that there are one, two, three, four significant figures in that measurement as well. How about letter C, 0 0.0034? Now these zeros are before non-zero digits in a measurement. And we said that when that happens, they are not significant. Can't I write this number as, I'm going to see if I can squeeze it in right here, 3.4 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3rd. So those zeros are not needed. So that measurement, kiddos, only has two significant figures. Those zeros, none of them are significant. Okay, letter D, 245,000 kilometers. Now, once again, if you're not sure, we can write the number in scientific form. So 245,000 would be 2.45 times 10 to the fifth. So these zeros are placeholders. They're not significant. So I would say that that had three significant figures in it. Letter E, 0 0.00008760. Well, hopefully you understand that those are not significant. But that zero, it's at the end of a number to the right of the decimal. So that is significant. If I were to rewrite this in scientific form, I would have 8.760 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I would have four significant figures there. 1, 2, 3, and 4. That zero is significant. Letter F, 345,876.00 kilograms. Once again, we have a number that ends in zeros to the right of the decimal. So those are significant. So this value would have eight significant figures. If I wanted to write this in scientific form, I would have to write 3.458760 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 to the fifth power. So those zeros are important. You see, that last zero is my estimated value. That means I know the one for the one before it for sure. And if I know something for sure, that's significant. And I am allowed one estimated value. All right, how about letter G? A lot of you would probably say there's one significant figure here because I would measure three eggs. And in reality, this value has an infinite number of sig figs because this is a counted number and counted numbers are not measurements. Counted numbers have infinite number of significant figures. So if I said there were three eggs, how certain am I that there are three eggs? You're absolutely certain. There's no uncertainty. So a counted number, kiddos, has infinite sig figs. It's not like a measured value. So if I said that there are five dots here, I'm not measuring those dots, I'm counting them. And those five dots, if I were counting them and say, hey, there are five dots there, there'd be an infinite number of sig figs there. Okay, so counted numbers are not measured quantities.
Now let's do a couple calculations and we'll round off. There are two rules we follow and once again this is one of those things where you're going to have to take your time and learn the rules. The math is not hard. We're going to be either multiplying, dividing, adding, or subtracting. Please do not say the math is hard. You'll actually be embarrassing yourselves if you say that. You have to memorize the significant figure rules. That's what you're having an issue with, not the math. So rule number one, uh, the number of sig figs in an answer when numbers are multiplied or divided is equal to the smallest number of sig figs in any one piece of data used. So if I wanted to find the area of a room that was 8.3 meters by 4.83 meters, I would multiply those two numbers together because area is length times width. And my calculator would say, I'm not sure if you can see that, 40.089. So my calculated answer is 40.089 square meters. Now, I claim that that measurement is more accurate than my data provides for. I have to round this to the proper number of significant figures. So you notice that this measurement here has two sig figs. And this measurement here has three sig figs. When we multiply or divide, we round our answer according to the measurement that has the fewest number of sig figs. So I can round this off to two significant figures. So I count over two from the left, and I could write 40 with a decimal at the end. So 40 with a decimal at the end would give me two sig figs. Not 40.1. That would have three sig figs, wouldn't it? And not simply 40, because 40 would just have one significant figure. Another way I could write this number would be 4.0 times 10 to the first. That would also be a valid answer, because it has two sig figs in it. So when you multiply, or if I were to divide, I look at my measured values. And the one with the fewest number of sig figs, that's the number of sig figs I'm allowed in my final answer. Okay. Now, when we add or subtract, the number of digits in the answer depends upon the accuracy of the numbers used. I know that isn't very informative, but as I work through this, hopefully, it'll make some sense. So I'm going to add these measurements together, and I'm going to round my answer to the proper number of sig figs. So I have 12.52 centimeters, and I'm adding that to 8 centimeters, and then I'm adding that to 72.3 centimeters. Let's add those up. See, that's a 2, that's an 8. You guys hopefully are checking my math here. 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 2 more is 12. Let's carry the 1, 7, 8. Hopefully I did my math right. 92.82 centimeters. So, I claim that this has too many digits in it. This time I do not look at sig figs. Okay, do not look. When you add or subtract, do not look. I look at decimal points or decimal places when you add or subtract. Okay, so this measurement here I know to the nearest hundredth. This measurement here I only know to the nearest whole number. This measurement here I only know to the nearest tenth. So, how far or where should I round this answer off? Well, what comes after this 8? Do I really know? Could that be a 0? Could it be a 1? Could it be a 3? Maybe that says 7.9. See, I only know this to the nearest whole number. I don't know that it says 0 .00, like my calculator thinks it is. I only know it to the nearest whole number. So the fewest number of decimal places is to the nearest hundredth, the nearest whole number, to the nearest tenth. I have to round this answer off to the nearest whole number. So this would be 93 centimeters. So when you add or subtract, do not look at sig figs, you look at decimal places, and you round off to the least accurate. So hundredth, whole number, 
nearest tenth, I have to go to the nearest whole number because that's the least accurate. Okay, that's when you add or subtract. All right, what if we have numbers expressed in scientific form? Let's try this. We're going to multiply 2.45 times 10 to the 8th by 3.478 times 10 to the negative 4th. So, let's go ahead and put that in our calculator. I'll show you guys how to use your calculators right now if you're unfamiliar. To enter this value into your calculator, we press 2.45, and then we go second EE. -E. Now when you press second EE, -E, the letter E shows up in your calculator, and that means times 10 to some power. We want to go to the eighth power. So that 2.45 E8 means 2.45 times 10 to the eighth. I know you don't see the 10 in the screen, but that E signifies that it is there. Now we're going to multiply that by 3.478 and we want to go times 10 to the negative fourth. So we're going to go second EE -E again, and we're not going to press the minus sign, we're going to press the negative button right down here to the negative fourth. So my calculator looks like that right now. You might want to try that with yours and make sure it looks like mine. Then we can press enter, and my calculator says 85,211. 85,211. So, I'm multiplying here, so I'm going to look at sig figs. This measurement has three sig figs. This measurement has four sig figs. So I have to go with the one that has the least number of sig figs, three. So I count over three from the left, one, two, three, and I round off right here. So 85,211 rounded off to three digits is 85,200, not 852. Not, and a lot of kids will do this. Obviously 85,211 rounded off is not 852. It's 85,200. Now I'd feel more comfortable if we put 8.52 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, to the 4th. Either one of those answers would be correct. Okay? Alright. Well, let's see, that's all I have for right now. The next video I'm going to make, I'm going to do a bunch of examples for you. So we're going to do uh, some more significant figure examples where we're just determining the number of sig figs. Then I think I'm going to do some multiplying and dividing and rounding with you and some adding and subtracting and rounding with you. And we'll just do that for practice, so you won't find a paper in your notes that will go along with the next video. Uh, we're just going to practice and get really, really good at it before we go on. So this is important stuff. Once again, I hope you, I hope you guys agree with me. The math is not hard. We're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. That's it. The rounding is what you're having difficulties with. And it's just going to take you some time and discipline to learn some rules and practice. Okay? All right. Stick with me. Thanks. Bye-bye.